Greetings, cocksuckers. It's Monday. I don't know what the fuck the date is. I know it's spring, and I know we're back. Uncle Joey's joint is brought to you by DraftKings. Listen, it's almost April, and the tournament fucking insanity is heating up. Let me tell you something. You got to get into this fucking tournament action. Whether you like college basketball or you don't, especially what DraftKings is serving up now. You ready for this one? Bet a dollar on any tournament game. If your team wins, you win $100. Did I not tell you DraftKings is the number one rated sportsbook app? Or you think I'm just fucking around with you people here? If your team wins, you win $100. Bet a dollar on any tournament game. It's that simple. Pick any college team that's still in the running for your shot at winning $100. And all it takes is one fucking dollar. One dollar into $100 is 100 to 1 odds. These kinds of odds are once in a fucking lifetime. And DraftKings is bringing them to you on a fucking Monday during this madness, this fucking insanity. There's no better way to put your college basketball knowledge to the test than when you put your money where your mouth is with DraftKings Sportsbook app. Oh, college ball ain't for you? Well, I'll tell you what's going on this weekend. They're also giving you 100 to 1 odds on select fighters at this weekend's UFC 250. What'd you forget? Tyrone Woolley's on the card. Stipe Miocic is on the card. Ungayo is on the card. I mean, we got a great fucking UFC card. So if college ain't for you, then Saturday night, UFC 260 is. DraftKings is safe, secure, reliable. Withdraw your money when you want. It's your money. Now, what, what, what do you want to do? You want to keep fucking around with these Mickey Mouse little fucking betting services? Or go with the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. Download the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app. Use promo code JOY when you sign up to turn a dollar into a hundred. If the college basketball team of your choosing pulls off the win. That's code Joey to turn $1 into $100 for a limited time only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Hold on. There's fine print. You got to be 21 or older. Go back and get the fucking kazoo. Come back and see me when you're 21. New Jersey, Indiana, PA, new customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Now, if you got a gambling problem, you got to take care of that. This is not for you. Call 1-800-GAMBLER if you're in Jersey or in Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. But if you're straight, motherfucker, the party starts today. Let me tell you what I got on top for you motherfuckers today. Oklahoma versus getting 14 and a half from Gonzaga this afternoon. You still got time. And you got Colorado getting two points from Florida fucking state. You got Tyrone Woolley this weekend. You got Sean O'Malley. You got Ungayo versus TP. Listen, this is the weekend for you. Download DraftKings right now. Press in code Joey. And let's turn a dollar into a hundred dollars. The joint is also brought to you by CBDLion.com. When it comes to CBD, the best tried surgery. I just went through surgery with them. I've been off the pain pills. Why? CBD Lion has helped me that much. Do you understand me? Whether it's the gummies, whether it's the kinesiology tape, chocolate bar, tincture, the long style kinesiology tape, bath balls. I mean, listen, let's do this. Just go to CBDLion.com right now. And see what they got. Read. Read about CBN, CBD, CBY. See the advantages, how it can help you. This company is no joke. This is real CBD. And I'm telling you, they took care of me over this surgery. I'm walking. I'm jumping. I'm doing whatever I need. And thanks to CBD Lion. So do me a favor. Go to CBDLion.com right now. Press in code Joey. Church, you're going to get 20% off delivered right to your fucking house. Do you understand me? CBD line right now code Joey at church delivered right to your house. The joint is also brought to you by Spring is in beer. You're ready for love when it comes your way. Make sure you have all the confidence where it counts, if you know what I'm talking about. That's why I'm showing up here with Blue Chew. You combat all forms of VD, erectile dysfunction. Blue Chew brings you the first chewable dick pill, and it don't taste that bad either. Same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis at a fraction of the cost. This isn't no fucking snakes, fucking skin that your friend bought you back from Colombia. This is science. 
Blue Chew is an online prescription service. No visits to the fucking doctor. No awkward conversations. Some fucking pharmacist giving you a fucking the Maluk eye. No waiting online. The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com. Talk to one of their licensed medical providers. And once you're approved, you receive the prescription within days. It ships right to your door in a discreet package. Even the fucking nosy mailman won't know what's in there. Blue Chew tablets are made right here in the USA. They're prepared and shipped directly, and they're way cheaper than what you'd get at a pharmacy. Listen, even if your dick hurts, I know a lot of you guys are young, and you got good dick as it is, but hey, listen, you want to show up with the best dick in town. You know what I'm saying? You want her to call you back and go, what the fuck was that the other night? So do me a favor. Go to Blue Chew. I got a special deal for you. Try Blue Chew for free. Joey, what are you talking about? Free. It's free. Use promo code Joey at checkout. Just pay $5 for shipping. That's bluechew.com. Promo code Joey to receive your first month free, as always. And I want to thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the joint. Listen, this is the way to go. I'm telling you right now. You want to give her a stab and that she'll remember for the rest of her fucking life. Go right now to bluechew.com. And press in code Joey at checkout. I want to thank Blue Chew. I want to thank CBD Lion and DraftKings. Let's get this motherfucking party started. It's Monday, cocksuckers. I'm going to burn my fucking fingers here. There you go. What's happening, you bad motherfuckers? It's Monday, the 22nd. I don't know what the fuck it is, the 21st. All I know is spring is finally fucking here. I got over my first winter in New Jersey. I'm not going fucking anywhere. It was one of the mildest winters I have ever experienced. I mean, knock on wood, it ain't over yet, but it was supposed to snow Friday, and it didn't, and uh, I'm fucking happy about it. We had a great weekend. Friday night. I mean, listen, man, it's it's been a whole different life, like I told you guys, since I've been to Jersey. I got a social life again. I'm doing shit I haven't done in fucking 30 fucking goddamn years, and it feels great, man. Uh, what did I do this weekend? Let me see. Friday night, I went to uh, my friend's... I mean, I know her since I was... Do you guys remember when I told you I hit on a MILF when I was 14? Like 15, I fucking hid in the bushes and I was on a tackler in the park and all this. It was her birthday. Like, she's like 70 now and she's tight with my daughter. Out of all people, my daughter loves this woman because remember, she was my friend's mother in law. So now I hang out with my friend. You know, he's 60 now, I'm 58, and he has his mother in law living with him the hot one. And I told him that I hit on her and I was going to tackle her and fucking suck her titties and shit. And now she's like 78. And hey, how fucking crazy is that? That my daughter and her get along great. Her name is Faye. And my daughter is eight. And my daughter goes down there. She plays with the dogs. And then she disappears. And her and Faye go in the living room. And they watch the Disney Channel. And my daughter explains everything to Faye. Like, Faye, this is this. This is that. And I'll just sit there with my wife and just touch my wife or Bobby Bender. I'll touch them and I'll go, listen to these fucking two in the back. They're just, it's like two peas in a pod. It's fucking tremendous. But that's the only thing she's got as a grandmother here. So it's kind of nice to see when they fucking uh, get together. Saturday, we had the date night. You know, we, uh, oh, we went out. We fucking, because she's playing softball now. This is my new life now. Today starts softball and she's on a fucking traveling team, guys. So I'm part of the fucking 
travel fucking combination now, which I'm excited about. Listen, I moved here to, for that, for her to experience a different life and different things, and, and it's working. It's working. My knee is uh, three-quarter there. You know what I'm saying? I think they'll release me from PT in about two weeks from physical therapy. So thank you for all the well wishes and the fucking get well, Joey. Trust me, I had a couple of rough fucking nights there, but I'm happy I did it now. Now in hindsight, I'm happy I did it. It's like if you, if you think of doing it, always remember that, you know, just keep putting the work in. And every four or five days, I see a little something. I see a little bit more improvement. More, uh, April 8th will be three months, so I'm at the two-and-a-half-month mark. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm good, man. But I wouldn't have done it without you guys, CBD Lion. You know, Mike helped me. My wife, thank you guys for all the fucking support and whatnot. And there was something else I wanted to tell you before we cracked into what we're doing, but not really. I'll tell you what we got today. <laughs> I'm doing, like I told you guys, Wednesdays is me and you guys having a chit-chat. Mondays is a Zoom meeting just to venture out and let this podcast grow a little bit and let it become what it's going to become. But right now, I want to bring you one of my fucking best buddies. I missed him so much. I had to call him up. One of the funniest podcasts I ever did was with him. Uh, we have great chemistry together, so he's the guest on the show this week. I hope you enjoy this. Who's the fucking guest? Mr. Greg Fitzsimmons. Fuck with you, <laughs> cocksuckers. <laughs> Enjoy, Greg. I'll see you afterward. What's up, kid? Well, just chilling in my office, you know. My little home away from home. I got this. Have you ever been to this office? Probably not. Never. Right? Never. Five minutes from my house. I got a fucking lazy boy, flat screen TV, coffee maker. That's all I need. That's what I'm going to get soon. Pretty soon yeah. I'm going to get one of those up north in North Bergen and see Caucus. Yeah. Nice little office again. Put some pictures up, you know, the whole fucking yeah. deal. Yeah, right. It's a place to uh, it's a place to masturbate, but you also do podcasts there. There's lot, lots of options. I did a lot of things in that office. I never yeah. masturbated in that fucking <laughs> office. Shut up. Are I you serious? I swear to God. No, that's disgusting. <laughs> I always feel like there's cameras on me. You know what I'm saying? Like in a hotel room, you don't want to jerk off. I don't trust nobody. <laughs> Vegas, you don't do nothing. You, you got to fucking cover the shower in Vegas because you know they're watching you in Vegas. Oh, fuck yeah. I would I gotta... smoke coke in closets in Vegas. Did you know that? I used to smoke I... coke in a closet because they're watching you. You right. have to assume they're watching you in Las Vegas. Dude, when I was in Vegas one time, I was hosting the Porn Awards. It was the uh, 25th anniversary of the Porn Awards. And we're at the Venetian Hotel. And the tabletops, it's on Showtime. There's 7,000 coked up porn whores out there. And they got, instead of flowers at the table center, they got a basket with uh, flashlights and dildos. So me and my buddies are there. Of course, every fucking guy I've ever met is like, hey, man, I'm coming out. I'm coming out. So I rented a house. I rented a house with five rooms in it. And we fucking packed people in. We all grabbed the flashlights. We go out to the strip clubs. I'm, I'm the host, so they give me the fucking VIP table. We're hanging out with Jenna Jameson and Tito Ortiz and everybody. So then I go back to my room, and I got a flashlight. And here's the thing about a flashlight. You laugh about it, but then when you're alone in a hotel room with it, it starts looking at you. It's like, you're going to fuck me. And you're like, no, I'm not going to fuck you. 20 minutes later, I got my dick in the flashlight. I'm jerking off into it. I finish. And now it's the next morning, and I'm and I'm packing to leave, and I'm like, all right, what do, what am I gonna do here? I got a, I got a dirty flashlight. Do I do I put it in my bag and take it home? Fuck no, it's got jizz in it. Do I throw it in the trash can? I don't want to horrify some maid. So what do I do? I slide it into the pocket of the bathrobe in the closet. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Some poor bastard to go in there with his jizz hand and get all fucked up. Let me tell you something. When those flashlights came out, like 2010, when Rogan was really pushing them, yeah. a friend of mine actually got one. I went to his house, and he's like, look, look what I got. I got that. I'm like, he goes, you don't have one? I, listen, I've done some disgusting fucking things. <laughs> I have jerked off on the street in a car. I laid down and like whack off on coke, that type of shit. But I got to be honest with you. I think if I fu there's things that you do and you feel terrible about afterward. Like oh you, yeah, yeah. You my don't want to say nothing to nobody. I, 
Yep. I couldn't look somebody in the eye if I fucked the flashlight. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then had to look at my jizzy cocaine cum in the fucking thing. It water hits it. It's gonna be like fucking chicken soup. But you can like, yeah. see it all slick on the type like Galveston, yeah. like right. fucking. You know. There's just some things that you do. It's like the first time. I, I you know, I fucking hate hand jobs. Really? I was in Michigan, 1995. My shoulders bother me. I'm naive. As and the Michigan is the state, the state of the hand job. It's shaped like a fucking hand. I was naive to fucking these pull places, you know. And I saw a massage, and I actually pulled over, and I went in, and, and the Chinese girl that greeted me, or the Asian woman that greeted me, was fucking hotter than fuck. I had no, you know, misconception. I didn't have. I, I, I was paid four fifty for the week then. Yeah, right. I was a feature act. Four fifty. And two hundred was already gone, and it's going to cost me a hundred in gas to get home. There was no, yeah, right. I didn't go in there to fuck nobody. Or, yeah, I just went in to get like a thirty dollar, forty dollar massage. Yeah, lady tells me to strip down right away. I know there's a problem. Listen, you're not rubbing my hips. Yeah, I, you're just rubbing my shoulders. What? What? Right. The, oh, strip, strip down. She came in, and then they played the switch and bait. You know, when I got bait there, switch. it was what, whatever her name is. It was Ali Wong. When I got there. <laughs> You know, it was a girl like as beautiful as Ali Wong is what yeah. I'm trying to say. She was yeah. beautiful like Ali Wong. Right. But then they sent like her grandmother in dressed in like oh, fucking drag. Yeah. She had to be 80 years old. Yeah. And she rubbed my shoulder, but like two minutes in, my, not yeah. even two minutes in, she's like $40. Right. And I was so fucking embarrassed and so humiliated. Yeah. I uh-huh. didn't get the hand job. No. I didn't get the hand job. But I always thought about how you would feel. Yeah. Just a hand job and you Yeah, go but home the old they- lady hands. Here's the thing about the old lady hands. You ever touch the skin on the hands of an old person? It's not like really. Fuck it. It's like a baby lamb. It's soft. Yeah, like my fingers. But I still don't job. want my hands on my dick. It's disgusting. Like it's just disgusting. <laughs> There's just some things that yeah. you do and you feel so fucking disgusting afterward. Especially when it comes to sex, like getting a blow job from an awkward chick on the road on one of those triple runs. Yeah. Like the potato run one or two, you know. Yeah. And the chick. You don't even get the belt off. She just jams it down your fucking pants. Just things that are just so disgusting. I remember one night just talking with Lee. We were coming back from a gig, and I was telling them about beginning comedy, those first couple road gigs, what you bump into and what you learn. And and it's just disgusting. It's just fucking disgusting. Yeah, that's one thing I missed out on because I've I've been married for so many years. And I never fucked around on the road as I, I never dealt with any of that fucking shame. For me, it was always just like I go out on the road to work. And I don't I don't come back with the, the Bobby Lee stories and the Joey Diaz stories. Listen, from you got to remember from, you know, two, 91 to 2000, there were the craziness, drugs, yeah, sex stories, fingering a girl on the dance floor in Idaho Falls and she had a yeah. yeast infection. My hand smelled like yogurt. I mean, I got a thousand of those. <laughs> I got a thousand of those. <laughs> Old Greek yogurt. Then yeah. after 2000, when I hooked up with Terry, I was like, you know what? I can't disrespect her on the road, but yeah. I could still do drugs and all that shit. You yeah. Know? And the drugs, I did things on drugs that were so fucking embarrassing. Like, you know, jerking off, waiting for the dealer. You know, you jerk off in between. I remember one yeah. weekend freezing. Uh... Kelly LeBrock's movie, The Woman in Red, there's a scene when Gene Wilder beeps the horn and she gets out of the bed and they show her bush. And I remember freezing it just at that rate, like that, (laughs) just and just sitting there and trying to jerk off your coked up dick and your dick is an inch big and you're trying to jerk it off and you're fucking tarant telling it. You're doing this to it. You're doing the cappuccino. It's just, you know, I think of all those things now and I'm like, I'm going to push that out of my mind because... Nobody needs to know about that right. disgust. Those type of things I did, yeah. like that, that yeah. type of stuff, was just enough for me to. And the flashlight, there was no way I was going to fuck the flashlight. You know why? Because I know. Yeah. I'm gonna know. You know. I'm gonna know. That's all that needs. It doesn't matter. Nobody needs to know. But I'm gonna fucking know that I fucked the right. flashlight. Right. And then I'm gonna go to church one day because I usually don't go to church, but when I do, I look at the twelve stations of the cross. 
And I think about all the creepy shit I did, Irish. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. As Catholics, we get beat up by our own fucking guilt. Oh, yeah. And that's when you think about when you see Jesus getting beat up. Next thing you know, I see myself jerking off with a flashlight. And yeah. I feel depressed. <laughs> I don't eat the cookie. Now I feel like a real fucking sinner. So the, the psychological effects of Catholicism fucking stop me from being a fucking animal yeah, all the way. Yeah, if you can't eat the cookie, man, it's all about the cookie. You got you to gotta stay clean. You got to pray. You got to show up on time. Otherwise, you don't get that cookie. It was so weird how when I was doing all my craziness, like I was a sinner. I'm still a sinner, but I forgave some sins and some sins were okay. Like I was such a hypocrite about sins, you know. I was okay about doing drugs. I was okay about fucking stealing, you know, like it was okay. Uh There were so many things, but like, you know, cheating on your girlfriend ain't all right. Right. Like, I had so many different... I was so contradicted by the fucking drugs, you know? But one thing I wanted to tell you... I mean, what is a... You know, a moral person, a truly moral person, comes up with the things they believe in and that they'll live by, and that's their credo, and they stick to those. If you're somebody that just goes, oh, you're showing me the 10 rules and I'm going to follow them, what does that show me? That shows me that you're obedient. It shows me that you're docile. That doesn't show me that you're actively figuring out what your relationship to the universe is and what you think is right and wrong. You come up with your own Ten Commandments. It's, uh, no, it wasn't right. You know, when I was doing drugs, like I think of little things, like I think about robbing a cookie place. You know, one of those little huts that you see? Yeah. Like I was that sick. Yeah. Like that I was yeah. walking the streets one night uh-huh. and I saw the cookie shop and the windows were open. <laughs> I'm like, I gotta go in there and going in there and getting thirty eight dollars and walking home and like going, What is wrong with you? Wait, you walked into the shop and stole it while they were open? No, 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 no. It was closed. I was going for a walk. I was walking home. Yeah. And I saw this cookie place. I'm not gonna say where because it's embarrassing. Uh-huh. It's a little town, and it's got like a little mall, you know, on the street. And this was part of the mall. It was standing. Oh, so there it's like a itself. kiosk. Yeah, like yeah. a kiosk. Right. And I saw that whoever ran the cookie shop left the windows open, like with a screen, like yeah. it's just a screen. Yeah. And I just popped the window and went in there, and I remember like stealing the register. The, the, it was like thirty eight dollars. Oh, yeah. It was like thirty eight fucking dollars, and I yeah. stole a couple cookies. And on the walk home, I'm like, what? <laughs> And here's the crazy thing. I had 10 grand in the bank. You know what I'm saying? Like, why would I rob $38? Like, I did shit like that. That that still till today, like, I go, Jesus Christ, what type of low life was I? I didn't know because cocaine would tell you there's cocaine in that house. Like, I would drive by a house and go, I don't know. I think they got, like, 20 keys in there. (laughs) And then I would bust in. It was, like, an old person's home that had the garage filled with newspapers. There were hoarders or something like that. I'm like, there's no coke in here. Yeah, and I would take something just to make it be worthwhile. Yeah. And you, you, on the drive home, you're like, this is so embarrassing. It's like stealing a car. Like, I never robbed a car in my life because you're in the fucking thing. Once they pull you over, there's no getting out of it. Yeah. Oh, I got into the wrong car? No, there's no getting out of it. I never stole a car stereo. Like, I never I broke a steal. window. I used to steal my neighbor. I lived, when I grew up, I lived on top of the hill. And uh, I had a neighbor. Terrence Mahoney, he lived in my backyard. His parents were Eucharistic ministers, super Catholic. And they were, you know, they had like 11 kids. And one of the kids, Terrence, had a little bicycle. And I'd be late. I'd be late going to school in the morning. And I'd, gra- I'd go in the garage. I'd grab Terrence's bicycle. And I'd go flying down the hill. And I'd get to the bottom of the hill. I'd throw it in the bushes. And then they had a police blotter in the local paper. And it used to say, Terrence Mahoney, 34 Suncliff Drive, had his bicycle stolen again yesterday. <laughs> and they take it up the hill. They give it back to Terrence. I get up in the morning. I go in the garage. I take it. I go down the hill again. <laughs> Low level crime. That's not like stealing 20 uh, kilos of Coke from a guy's house. No, but that, but, was my, uh, that was my petty crime. I never found, like, the other night we were watching a show on crack. My wife, I, she, there was a show on Netflix about drugs in the 80s or Oh, something. yeah, I saw that, right. And she put it on, and I'm sitting here watching it. And I looked at her, and I go, I got to tell you something. This is all I'll tell you. I'm very happy that my friend is dead and that my secrets went with him to the grave oh, from this shit. time. Like, from 80 to 85, and even 93, I did a couple things with him that were fucking creepy, like drug things, you know, no, no, uh-huh. nothing. Like, we weren't into that craziness. These were just ripping off drug dealers that were just, 
It was just creepiness. But yeah. it was part of the game. In 93, when I did it, like, I got, you know, before 87, 88, I was a fucking savage. I got locked up. And when I came out, I said, I'm going to stay under a certain radar. I'm still going to be a savage. I know how to sling coke correctly. You know, I know I'm not going to sell to a cop. There were things I was going to do, and there were things I weren't going to do. I was never going to kidnap somebody again. That was a big fucking mistake. Live and learn, right? But, yeah, but I was still going to do drug rips if the mm-hmm. opportunity presented itself. If I see some yeah. guy that's getting into the business and he's not prepared, boom, you hit these weak, you know, they, and that's what they were talking about. They were talking about weaknesses that it got to the point in New York where drug dealers wouldn't even smile. You couldn't even laugh at a joke because other drug dealers saw you that as a weakness, and that's okay. what I did. I looked for weaknesses. You know, these new guys would get into it. They'd buy an ounce, they'd make $2,000, and then they're like, Give me a pound, and you sell them a pound, and you just rob them back the fucking pound. I mean, it was uh-huh. creepy shit, but there was some really, really creepy outlandish shit that he took to the grave with him. Yeah, I bumped into him in 99, and we had a talk at a coffee shop. He was one of my brothers growing up, but he was very violent. He was He didn't give a fuck. And, uh, you know, there was things that happened that I'm not proud of, but I'm happy he took those secrets to the grave with him. Nobody will yeah. find out. Yeah. Uh, I can tell you my one, my, one experience, my one experience selling drugs when I was in high school, <clears throat> I used to sell mescaline. Me too. Purple mescaline for this kid named uh, Andre. I'm not going to say his last name, although I'm pretty sure he's in jail for life. And this kid was, he was the blackest human being I've ever seen in my life. I mean, it he was, was African like. African-American? He was African-American. He was, and he was tough. And he had cousins in town. And like, you didn't fuck with them. You didn't fuck with these cousins. They were, they, they kind of like, the, you know, we had projects downtown and they kind of like ran them. And so I start selling mescaline for him because then I would, I'd sell it to all the white kids. They're all going to Grateful Dead concerts and going to the park and, you know, on a Saturday. <clears throat> so. I come home one day, and it's a Saturday afternoon, and I walk in the house, and I look in my living room, and my mom is sitting at the dining room table having tea with Andre Green. I just said his last name. <laughs> so I walk in, and I'm like, what? I'm fucking like, my eyes are what I'm like, what is going on here? And there's a killer sitting at the table with my mom drinking tea. And so she went inside. He goes, uh, hey, man, you got my money? I go, dude. I told you I pay you on Tuesday. What are you doing at my house? Today? Well, I need the money kind of early. I go, I go. Here's the money. We're done. My days of slinging mescaline are over. That was it. That was it. I just. I don't need. I, I don't need Andre Green coming. You don't need Andre coming to your house. I yeah. I stopped selling mescaline because I graduated to cocaine. You yeah. Know, like quaaludes yeah. and cocaine. A lot of money in mescaline. Eighty cents a piece. My mother $3, still says two eighty profit. Two twenty profit. Says, well, what happened to that? What happened to that nice boy Andre? Where, where's Andre? He's doing twenty to life, ma. I'm not. I'm not sure. I haven't checked in with him. I was like Andre growing up. Like when I went to kids' houses, yeah, they were like, "There he is, the fucking kiss of death." I wonder what he's gonna get my son involved into. <laughs> you know, there's a kid I hang out with now still. Yeah. That he got arrested years ago. He got arrested about fifteen years ago. It was an ugly type of arrest, and his mother blames me till this day which is true i'm the one that did coke with him the first time we did coke together he was a genius but he continued to go and he fucked himself up i'm still tight with him i talked to him yesterday i talked to him tuesday you know but it i feel guilty about him because he was destined to be a fucking star like an engineer he went to mit no shit wow. yeah and he just fell off to the wayside and uh you know i help him so now. it sounds like he so he was doing coke at a young age, but he kept it together enough to get into MIT and graduate? He was one of those people that I was jealous of growing up because we took the same classes and I had to work really hard to get a fucking B. Mm-hmm. And he would just show up and get an A. Mm-hmm. If you put effort in, he got an A+, plus, which is how he got into MIT. Mm. And uh, I asked him once, how are you so smart? Give me the secret. And he goes, listen, take notes and review all your information every night. He goes, that's what I do. I review it, I review it, I review it. So when the finals come, I know it. Mm -hmm. In and out. He goes, so just work on it for an hour every night. And it was so weird 
that I started do, doing what he was doing, and my grades went up. Mm -hmm. I ended up quitting high school because I was a fucking loser, not because I was stupid. I, I, I love stupid. that. I love that you're sharing this like groundbreaking underground secret of how to do well in school. You listen and you study. That's so it. he was like broken down for me. I, I had no idea. Like I was doing all this reading and all this extra shit to try to be smart, and he just cut it down for me. He's like, Pay it. "Keep your eyes on her. Yeah, listen to what she's saying, and just take certain notes." Yeah, because yeah. the thing is, teachers write the tests. Right. So they're writing down what they told you exactly. Right. If you read the book, you're reading a bunch of extraneous information that that teacher's not going to include. That teacher's not going to include. So right. he taught me how to narrow it down. So I went from sitting to doing homework in study hall for 45 minutes to 15 minutes. Yeah. And I was getting like bees. You know, I wasn't a genius like him. Yeah. You know, I mean, he was taking like trig his sophomore year, that type of shit, you know. Right. And he got into MIT. We tried Coke maybe three weeks before my mother died in 79, like October uh -huh. of 79. And somebody had given it to me, and I was holding on to it for months. I'm like, I'm, not, I'm never going to do this. I would sell it from time to time. Like somebody would give it to me, and I would sell it. I would get my hands on it and sell it, but I would never do it. I swore I would never do it. And one day I had to go, let me bring it with me just in case somebody wants to do it. We robbed a beer truck. We ended up at his house. <laughs> And I told him, like, oh, you want to go upstairs? And there was like 10 of us. And I'm like, you want to go upstairs and do a line of coke? That's the first time ever. So we were scared yeah. at first. We were little pussies. Yeah. We made vodka with a... Uh, not gin. Peppermint schnapps. Oh, yeah. And we yeah. grinded down the ice cubes. Uh -huh. And you called them snowballs. So we sprinkled okay. cocaine on top. Nice. And we drank them first. I'm like, you feel anything? Nah. Do you feel anything? Nah. You sure? Nah. Yeah. And we finally like took a little bit and put it on our gums and uh, yeah, I could feel the numbness and they're like, well, let's go for it. Let's just snort it. And we snorted like three lines and then went back downstairs and everybody was asking us, why are you guys acting weird? And we're like, nothing. <laughs> we're not doing nothing. Another time he had a wrestling, he had a wrestling finals. He was like in the state semifinals. Of course. A and genius I, and a, and a, and a wrestler. Athlete. He was a fucking wrestler. And sure enough, I give him a line of THC. AKA Angel Dust. Oh, he's shit. wrestling with the guy and he ended up biting him. And that night he calls me. He's like, "You, mo you motherfucker! I fucking bit the guy. I, 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 in my head it was a street fight. So I bit him and I got disqualified because of you. <laughs> you know how you pass the, you know how you pass fucking your papers up, like when the teacher goes past your yeah. test up. His, he sat in the end row of my row. I was in the front. So when I would get his answers, I'd erase his answers and shit. And he'd come back to me. How did I get F-72? I don't understand. I wrote that answer down. Somebody erased it. You were the reverse curve. Oh, my God. I used to fuck yeah. with him constantly. Oh, yeah, that's great. He asked to move to a different row. I mean, yeah. it was just, uh, and we're still tight now. He, You know, I, I talked to him every other day, basically. And one day last week. When when we when I switched over, I called him up and I do Patreon, and I was gonna ask him to help me with the Patreon. I go, do you want to help me with the pay? But I know that he's he's Ubats, you know what I'm saying? Like he's he's selling coke to this one, he's making drug deals. He showed up here a week ago with a case full of sneakers. I mean, it's fucking hilarious. <laughs> he just called me out of the blue and he's like, I, I got a present for you, because he sounds like Lee. That's why I love Lee for all those years yeah. because he reminds yeah. me of this guy. Right. And uh, I think it was either Sunday or Saturday, he called me, and he's like, I'm in the area. Did, did, did you mind if I stop by? I got a present for you. And I'm like, I'll meet you outside. You can't come in. My wife, the COVID, he pulled mm -hmm. up with a mask on. You know, the last guy I expected with a mask on. Uh -huh. He just got his teeth in. He got new teeth. Uh -huh. I helped him out with the teeth. Yeah. And he brought me something like, uh, he brought me a pineapple. Like, this is no shit. He brought me a pineapple. <laughs> Like, he brings me, like, the most craziest shit, you know? Yeah. A case of sneakers, a pineapple. A sn sneakers that didn't fit for my daughter, that uh -huh. they fit my daughter. She's like, who gave them to me? I go, like, your Uncle Jimmy. And then she goes, where is he? I want to meet him. I go, he don't, he don't, Jimmy don't play that shit. You know what I'm saying? Jimmy don't want to come in. Jimmy, like, just take him. He showed up, like, with the weirdest stuff. And then he showed me, he goes, look what I got. And he showed me, like, a vial. Of Coke. He goes, I'm making a delivery. I just came by to tell you I love you. And 
give you some fruit, apples. <laughs> he brought some tangerines, you know, and stolen sneakers. I mean, tremendous. Where else do you have friends like that? This is why I moved back here. That's I why you got to get back to Jersey, man. I called him. He called me the other day and he goes, I need a favor. Can you throw me some dough? I, I'm going to get. I sent it to him and he sent me the dough back yesterday. And I called him nice. back last night and I go, let me tell you something. It has been an honor to have you in my life. I just want you to know that you were one of the reasons I moved back here because you put so much pleasure. He's always come through. He's always one of those kids that when I was a kid and I was in a mess, if I was in a hotel room like from the night before and the, the Hindu was calling me, we need the footy for dollars for the next night. Yeah. And I wouldn't have yeah. it. I'd have to call him. Yeah. And he wouldn't just bring me $44. He'd bring me two chicken cutlets, a Valium, two joints, a little <laughs> a bit pineapple. of coke, a pineapple. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was always a bag. I, I brought you, my mom yeah. made roast beef. Like, yeah, that's he great. took care of me so much that today I can't turn my back on him no matter what. Like, uh -huh. this time he'll call me. He's in a pinch. I'll give it to you next week. I don't hear from him. Do I get mad? No, because... Yeah. He basically saved my life when I was a kid. Never told anybody what he did for me. You know how when people mm. give you money, like I had to give Coco 200. He never repeated what he did for me as a child. Yeah, He was just my friend. Right. Uh, he had a Volkswagen that wouldn't go in reverse. So he used to have to open up his door and push his foot <laughs> backwards. He shot me in the dick with a BB gun one day. I was coming out of my backyard. He beeped the horn. And when I come around the backyard, I see him with a rifle pointed at me like Lee Harvey Oswald. I'm like, what's going on? All of a sudden, I felt like Psh. he shot me with a pellet gun right on my dick. I didn't even get mad at him. Like, you know how you would say to somebody, what the fuck is wrong with you? I laughed my ass off because only he would think of shooting me in the dick because he told me, if you show me your dick, I'm going to shoot it. And I remember one day I put it on his car. He's like, that's it. I'm going to shoot it. Sure enough, I come out of the side of the house and there he is staring at me with the Volkswagen with a BB rifle and he shot me right in the fucking dick, dog. I got in his car. We went to the city, copped a bag of dope, and we laughed the whole way through like jingle bells. That's fucking great. Fucking craziness. Dude, somebody was stupid enough. I, I never shot a gun. So my friend's from Texas, Gail, and she goes and she buys me a BB gun for my 50th birthday, a pump, you know, a pump gun. And so I go out in the backyard and I got my nephew there. And my nephew is like a, uh, he was like a Navy SEAL. And so he's very, he's very into guns. He's got a Glock. He's got all these fucking Israeli 12 gauge fucking handguns. And so we're, we're in the backyard with the, with the gun and we're shooting each other. We're, we're seeing who can take more pumps, shoot each other in the ass. And then he starts going, let's shoot cans. <coughs> so he's throwing cans in the air and we're trying to shoot the Coke can before it hits the ground. So anyway, we do this all day, and then the next day I get a text from my next-door neighbor who's got two little kids, and they, they text me a picture of their blown-out window with BBs in it, their kid's room. She goes, do you have a BB gun? It took me about 12 minutes to muster the traits and write, yes, I do. <laughs> I had to go over there. I could have shot her fucking kid's eye out. I'm 54 years old, Joey. What am I doing? Just having a good time this Just pandemic. trying to have a good time. Hey, how you doing in the COVID, man? I mean, how, how you hanging in? You got, uh, you got places you can go that you feel safe? Absolutely. You know, I have kept it light. I yeah. I really, really, really have kept it light. You got your comedy night once a, once a week at that, a week. that one gig? And by the way, for people who wonder what I put in my mouth, it was Lucy Gum before the rumors start uh, right here. This is what was making all that noise. Uh -huh. uh, I've been okay. I got Vinny's on Wednesday nights. Right. I got two more weeks. Now I'm taking the summer off, Greg. There you go. Um, I think we did a lot the last 10 years. Yep. I think that. I didn't realize what we had done the last 10 years. It blew my fucking wig off. Like, uh -huh. When I watched the Comedy Store documentary, it really hit me mm -hmm. of who I was and who I'd become and how much I've changed during this pandemic. You know, yeah. We've become family men mm -hmm. now more than ever. I mean, I know you've always loved your boys and you, mm -hmm. you've talk, spoken to me about your boys, but this has made you tighter with them. Yeah. By now, if your wife hasn't killed you or you killed your wife, that means you've gotten tighter. 
Tighter. I feel absolutely closer feel to my this, wife right now. I feel now. closer to my wife now. Yeah. Um, this situation has really... I was fucked up when I got here. Mm-hmm. I was just fucked up mentally. You know, physically, the whole L.A. move, it just fucked me up. And doing the Patreon and doing the podcast brought me back a little mm-hmm. bit, little by little. The podcasts were brutal in the beginning. I went Bill Burr style. And I must have lost a big chunk of my audience, and that's fine. Because uh-huh. this is a lesson for everybody that you have to start over again. Yeah. Gain the public's trust again. And then it didn't help that 2,000 people started new podcasts. Everybody was out of work. So oh, now sure. everybody started right. a new podcast. Right. So things changed. The podcast format has changed in the world. But I'm still very happy. Yeah. Um, I'm a little disenchanted with stand-up, but that's okay. That's funny, you know, because I've... I mean, you and I talked about this. We talked on the phone last week, and uh, we were talking about that of like not feel like the honeymoon. The honeymoon period's kind of over. It's over. But then, but then I went out last night. We did this show because you know I do that St. Patrick's Day show at right, the Improv that right. you've done for me a million times. Right. I, I put it on every year, and uh, so so none of the clubs are open in L.A. So there's a golf course up the street from my house, and they've got this outdoor cafe, and they got picnic tables, and I and I found a little fucking like a. Uh, uh, what do you call those wood things that are on the ground? A pellet, I guess. Pellet. A pellet. He said, "That's a stage. Go, go, run to the music store and get a couple lights. We got a microphone. I got uh, Jackie Flint, Kevin Flynn. We got um, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, anyway, we got a bunch of comics, and we f- packed the place. Everybody fucking showed up. It was outside. Everybody wore their masks." My daughter came out. She's 17. She'd never seen me do stand-up before. So I went up there, and I'm nervous, you know, because first of all, I haven't been doing stand-up, so I'm nervous on top of that. And then on top of that, this is the first time my daughter, who's been sitting across from me from the dinner table for 17 years, I crack her up. Every night I do bits with her. Every night she sleeps with the dog in her bed, and every night I take the dog, and I do something funny with the dog when I bring it into her room. It's the last thing that happens at the end of the day. I make her laugh. Sometimes I take the dog, I put tinfoil on his head, and I say that he's, 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 he's getting transmissions from space. Sometimes I put him in a roller bag, and I zip it up, and I pull it into the room. I put fucking masks on him. Every night it's a different bit, and she la- but she's never seen me do stand-up. And I'm thinking to myself, like, this is going to be a formative moment for her to see what dad does for a living. This is my identity. This is my love. She's always known that I did it, but she's never seen it. So I went up there. Joey, I ripped the tits off that place. I gave it, I do my, my all these new bits I've been writing during quarantine and, uh, and doing fucking around with people in the crowd, shitting on people. And I got off and she gave me a big hug and she goes, dad, I'm so proud of you. It was such wow. a beautiful moment. Well, I can't show my daughter my stand-up yet for no. reasons unknown. Well, the first thing I said on stage was, my daughter's in the audience tonight, which is going to make this tricky because half my jokes are about fucking her mother. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Uh, my daughter's eight. She just came yeah. to me the other day. She goes, I heard you say the F word. <laughs> And I was like, it I took know, this I long? won't say it anymore. Yeah, no, I've said it before, but I think she finally learned what it was at school yeah, or something. Right, and, uh, right. You know, every, and everybody curses in New Jersey, you know. So yeah, right. She had no choice. Uh, the other day, I called her mother an unconscionable ball buster. <laughs> and her mother went upstairs, and she goes, did you hear the conversation? And she goes, yeah, I heard that call you an unconscionable ball. She didn't hear buster. She just heard ball. <laughs> Because my wife, I was sitting here and I'm trying to watch something and she's telling me some story about something and I go, stop, stop. Yeah. You have been an unconscionable ball buster during this fucking pandemic, <laughs> busting my balls when I'm trying to watch something. Now you want to tell me this fucking story? It's like that girlfriend that tells you she got uncle molested her during halftime. You're trying to watch a game and during halftime she types it to deflate you like your team is losing you're not covering the spread and all of a sudden your uncle molested you really i need this now in my fucking life you couldn't tell me this on valentine's night when we're eating fucking spumoni or some shit (laughs) you just you know my wife will talk about something at the wrong fucking time (laughs) I'm sitting here in pain. I just gave up the fucking pain meds. I got a splitting fucking headache. 
you know, I had surgery. So it's fucking a major surgery. And I'm sitting here fighting off pain at night, just sitting out here like a fucking mortadel waiting for my leg. Because, you know, when you have replacement oh. knee surgery, you have nightmares that you're going to walk and you're going to oh, yeah. see your leg behind you. Like, that's right. my biggest fear, that my leg is just going to fall off from the fucking knee down. Yeah, right. I'm going to be standing there like a putz, and all of a sudden there's an ankle, and I'm going to fucking faint. So you I got to get a shoe, one is. shoe's taller than the other one. You're yeah, that guy. No, it's fucking, it has been, and the pain pills with a different journey. That's a different psychological journey. And until you go, you know what, it's either pain or this feeling, this creepy feeling, I'll deal with the fucking pain. I got CBD lying, I got fucking... Yeah, you know, the, the arthritis cream. I've got you know the, the CBD under the tongue really works. Oh yeah, I tell you, it, it takes away the pain by. Have you 40%. tried the roll on or the gels? Because oh, I got some yeah. of that that fuck Omax yeah. Cryo Freeze. That shit's fuck good. Yeah. I got listen. Yeah. I got CBD line roll on. Yeah, I do the whole process. I roll it on. I let it sink into the knee. I let it air dry, and then I put the tens on, and mm -hmm. I pretty much electrocute myself. And then I forget, I got the tins on, and I go for soda, and the soda hits me in the finger, and I get, like, fucking a little jolt, like a little electrocution myself. I feel like fucking that guy in Escape from Alcatraz. Like, every night when I have the tins on, I would go, tonight's the night I electrocute myself. <laughs> I have had it so, I had such a rough fucking pandemic. People yeah. do not understand that. From March to fucking May or June, I was pretty much knocking myself out every night with drugs. What kind of drugs? You, you name it. Whatever really? would put me the fuck down. You know. Yeah. I, for 12 years, I went to a doctor, and every nine months, every 90 days, he refilled the prescription for Azepram, the yeah. baby Xanax, the white ones. Uh -huh. I had a 12-year supply that I never touched. Never. Right. When the fuck do I, you know. I get a little bit of anxiety before I go on stage, so I started putting footballs. They're footballs, white footballs. I would put them in my top pocket, and I'd forget to take it when I got to the uh -huh. store. I would only take them if I, you know, sometimes I would go to the store, walk up the stairs to the original room, yeah. and since they blacked out the window, I would get anxiety because yeah. I couldn't see the outside. And then I never touched them, really. For 12 mm -hmm. fucking 13 years, I didn't touch them. I think I took five or six of them when I had that feeling, you know. Yeah. During the pandemic, I was eating fucking 10 of those things at night. Yeah. Plus 1,000 milligrams of edible. Damn. Plus reefer all fucking day. Plus, Would, would you, you know, have a drink? I drank the first time on Rogan's podcast. I had a shot of whiskey because I, mm -hmm. I, I was doing the, between the pills and the edibles. I think the alcohol would have killed me. Yeah, I was going to say, you can't, can't lie don't fuck with alcohol like when you're no. taking all that stuff. And that's yeah. the thing about me. Like, during this, when I left the hospital after the knee surgery, they gave me 13 fucking prescriptions. Jeez. Muscle relaxers, you know. So right away, I went on a fucking, I got them in the refrigerator, the little shit, the little yogurt you drink for your stomach, to coat yeah. your stomach. and right. I tried everything, you know, there were pills I don't need to take. Like, they tried to put me on, like, a, an anxiety medication, Zoloft, or one of those that uh -huh. you just don't need. One minute you're taking them, jumping up and down, the next minute you're hanging from a tree like Chris Cornell. I don't, I, yeah, right. I don't want to hang those. No disrespect to Chris Cornell or his family. No, I know, believe that. me, I know a lot of people that have died taking those I don't want to take none of that shit, yeah, you know? Right. And, and one day I finally woke up out of the fucking uh, pill craze, the, the little white footballs, and I was like, these things aren't making me feel well. Mm -hmm. And the edibles weren't helping. So what I did was when I came here, I changed everything. Like I changed everything. I changed my diet, uh, stopped butter, meat on certain days. Uh, I focused on sleep, a lot more sleep. And I focused on switching my time change, which was a fucking nightmare. Really? I was, yeah, I was going to bed at 1 in L.A. That means I was going to bed at 4 here. Yeah. So for the first two weeks, I was sleeping four to eight and walking around like a zombo and like looking at people. I was so petrified yeah. from uh, World News Tonight yeah. with that fucking David Muir. He was like fucking my, my fucking exorcist. <laughs> I, it just scared the fuck out of yeah. me. I would be home every day at 3.30, pinned to the TV, counting the debts. Uh -huh. And yeah. I come here and nobody's got masks on and people having barbecues in their backyard. Uh -huh. First couple of weeks, it was fucking brutal to sit around. Uh -huh. Like I would be dying inside. But I said, fuck it, I'm going to switch. So I stopped eating edibles. And I used really? the edibles. Yeah, that's it. I used them just to go to sleep at night. 
How many milligrams you take to go to sleep? That you don't want to know. That's a personal <laughs> secret. A thousand. I, I take them in a syringe form. They come in a fucking syringe. It's a thousand yeah, milligrams. Yeah, yeah. And I put it in the tea. I drink a special two milligram tea called Kikamo yeah? that has CBD and CBN. And I will throw a whole fucking thousand milligrams in the fucking tea. And then 200 milligram capsules of ABX. No. The, oh, yeah. And then I fucking, now I read. So I turn the TV off. I read until I feel Shit. a little fucking obots. And Damn. I go upstairs and I dream in purple. Everything's in purple. <laughs> Dude, like my dreams are like Bonnie Rubble. A thousand milligrams. A thousand I get these, to switch I everything. Get these, you're going to laugh, but I got these little mints at the at the store because I don't I'm not a big pot guy, but I got these two and a half milligram tremendous. Mints. I got them two too. Dude, they just I come home sometimes and I pop one if I'm stressed out. All of a sudden I'm looking the wife in the eye. I'm I, I got time for everybody. I'm I'm doing paint by numbers, reading a book. It just takes the edge off. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. But a thousand. I can't imagine a thousand. I'm fucking changing this game. I'm gonna fucking Damn. go to God. I'm gonna go to Congress and tell them that. It's so weird how these edibles and this marijuana, you don't need pills. And I proved it to myself with the surgery, with the pain pills. Like, uh -huh. listen, the first two weeks I needed the Oxycontin. After that, I didn't need it no more. The feeling yeah. was horrible, and I kept yeah. having to take them. And I finally, he switched me off them. I was yeah. trying to wean off them myself. And I'm so proud I threw the magic number away. I threw 13 of them away. Were you taking like, those hard it. shits? Were you taking those coral? It's like a piece of coral coming out of Dog, your ass once it was you're on like, that for a few oh, it weeks. It was like, listen, the surgery shit was five days before I took a shit. And when it hurt, wow. it felt like I was getting gang raped by 20 fucking Puerto Ricans in my asshole. <laughs> because it was like yeah. the shit was skinny on the way out, but then it, it, it opened up like a boa uh -huh. constrictor. And hard. Hard, hard. As a rock. It was hard as a rock. Yeah, I can't describe the pain of the first two shits, but they gave me a medication that was like a bomb. Like they told you to take it after dinner at 7.30 and you would uh -huh. actually feel it. Uh -huh. Yeah, And it would just clean out your intestines. I had to take a shit during a podcast one day. I did a <laughs> podcast with uh, Ryan Sickle. It came out Monday. Watched the podcast on Zoom. I had to take it into the bathroom and shit because when you got to go now, you got to go. There's no holding back. Wait, did you did you continue the podcast while oh, you were fuck on the toilet? Yeah. What, am I going to call a timeout? That's for pussies. You got to you gotta commit. You got to commit. Dude, I got to watch that. Oh, my God. It was a tremendous three logs. They were sitting yeah. and one block in the other one. If it was the Indians, it was like Indians <laughs> made it. It was perfect. When I had a flush twice, and then I got up to pee, he gave me shit because I don't put my dick in the toilet. Cause never. Since I'm like four, I'm like, what if what somebody you sucks your dick? When you're shitting, you're supposed to pee in the toilet. Yeah. I get up to pee. I don't Wait, put so my dick in the your, toilet. Wait, so where's your penis while you're taking a dump? In my hand. I hold my, my nutsack. I don't want... <laughs> let me tell you something. The third night of this it's fucking like surgery... It's like driving a stick shift. And I got that ball sack that's gigantic. Let me tell you yeah, something. The I've second, heard about the, it. The yeah. third or fourth night of the surgery, I went to take a shit, like to try. I had a fart, like a twisted fart that uh -huh. was stuck to one of your little chubby ribs. Yeah. And I went in the bathroom to shit, and I had my pants down. And when I went to bend down, I had to hold on. My balls picked up the toilet seat, and I sat on my balls, and I couldn't get up. You don't know what pain and confusion is. It was either between my balls or my knees. I didn't know what hurt more. That threw 300 pounds on your fucking ball sack, and they didn't do nothing. Not even bruised. They're beautiful. My ball sacks are made of fucking steel. That's how I know I'm a fucking baller. I am balls all the way to the end. I sat on my nuts, and I remember sitting there feeling like the, my nuts were stretched out. Yeah. Like the skin. Like I thought it was going to And I'm like, ah. And I just fucking had to like wiggle my way back up. And I had to stand there for like four minutes and say, God, I don't know what I did to deserve this, but this is a fucking karma killer right here. This is, I'm good now for a couple months. I sat on my own nutsack. How I didn't go to the hospital, or I mean, I don't, I don't even Dude, know. Dude, if that happened to me, that would be the night I took the thousand milligrams. That would be that night. I don't even know, man. Oh my God. It has been, it has been. But on the other hand, uh, I miss you guys. I miss yeah. the comedy store. 
I miss you, man. It's hard not having you around. Oh, he always, man. You always warm me up when I see you. Please. I missed who I was, you know, because I've changed. Like, I can feel it. Like, when I drive now, I'm like, I'm a fucking suburban dad. Yeah, right. I drive around a dead deer every fucking day. Like, I mm-hmm. live in the sticks. And I'm like, my life has changed so much. I don't even know who the fuck I am. But lately, it's been coming back to me, you know? And that's why I'm enjoying the Zooms with all my old friends. Because yeah. I didn't want to go to Zoom. I was Bill Burn it until the pandemic was over. And then I was just going to have live guests. Uh-huh. But Bill Burr is Bill Burr for a fucking reason. He's a fucking animal. He's uh-huh. He could pull off that hour podcast by himself. I was having a hard time. I'm getting it now. I'm getting a lot better at it, but I'm uh-huh. not Bill Burr. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. I want to mix it up a little bit. Plus, I wanted to see you guys. I wanted to yeah. see you. And I want to look into your eyes. There's something I got to tell you. The first One of the first things I did when I got here was I bumped into the kid that owned the house, that Puerto Rican Nelson, the pervert in our neighborhood lived in yeah i told you that story first yeah in the yeah, podcast yeah right about the pedophile right. in our neighborhood yep and it's so funny that jimmy florentine told me a fucking hilarious story about growing up in jersey that there was a wrestler a guy that was a wrestling photographer that would take pictures and sell them to kids outside the garden uh-huh. but he was really a pedophile he would tell you that he had two ringside seats <laughs> And to come down, but then when you got down, you had to sit on his lap, and he would nibble on your ear while you're watching. He only had one seat. <laughs> and I'm sitting there going, Jimmy, isn't it funny? Like in New Jersey, we all knew who the pedophile was, and we fucked yeah. with him. Like other kids, like I got molested by him. you. Let him molest you. We tormented Puerto Rican Nelson. We we tell him come play football with us. He'd come out with the robe with no underwear on. You know, he thought he was gonna get some ass, but we'd always shut him down. We knew he was a fucking pedophile to this day. You know, the ice cream. We let him buy an ice cream, and then he go, "We're all going back to my house to look at the globe, right?" Yeah, 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 yeah. Fuck you. Look at the globe. Yeah, because he had a globe. He wanted to show us all the places he'd been to. Go fuck yourself. I don't want to see no fucking globe. But are you an English teacher? the fuck out of here son. <laughs> you know who the pedophiles is and you fuck with them in jersey yeah, like you right, know right. until one day you get pissed off and you're like 13 you just fuck them up like yeah. nelson didn't last that long for us to fuck them up that's yeah. great now you go to the midwest everybody just gets molested and they everybody gets molested and it. they leave yeah. it there you know yeah, yeah i remember big dog i fucking vividly remember wanting to be a cub scout like a little fag, like I went and bought the patches and I was trying to uh-huh. light fires by myself with sticks yeah. and I'm like, fuck it, I got to join the Boy Scouts. I still remember where I went. It was a church and the Boy Scouts would meet in the back once a week yeah. in the church. Yeah. And I remember going there and I was, I was never an altar boy, but I worked the bingo hall and I never got a funny feeling from the priest. I could always admit that. I never got molested by a priest or nothing like that. But I remember going to that fucking... Cub Scout we blow meeting. You have to be a we blow we first. Blows, yeah. And I didn't like the word off the bat, like we blow. Yeah, right. Like I, I don't know about that. that. And then I did, I thought the guy was creepy. Uh huh. I thought the guy like I went twice maybe, and I was like, you know what? Something ain't right here. And then uh-huh. now oh, it's all over television. You know, if you got molested by a Boy Scout, call this number. Oh, more than the Catholic priests are saying. Yeah. More incidents with the Cub Scouts and the Boy Scouts than the Catholic priests. And I know a lot of people who are good people who are Cub Scouts. This is like sure. everything else. There's good right. cops. There's bad cops. There's good Cubans. There's bad Cubans. Right. There's good Irish and there's bad Irish. How was your St. Patty's Day beside the comedy? Did you eat some corned beef? I ate to, well, I, I told you about that comedy show, so I told the people at the cafe, I said, you guys are making corned beef and cabbage. I want you to order about 16 cases of Guinness, and then I baked I baked a couple of Irish soda breads. My, it's my grandmother's recipe. I bought a couple sticks of that Irish butter, and uh, I sliced it up. for. I cooked it, so it was still hot when I got there. And then uh, I listened to fucking Clancy Brothers all day fighting songs, guys singing about Four Green Fields. You know, they they stole my four green fields. But my sons have sons. And, you know, I'm fucking jigging around the house. I had I love it. I miss it. I miss New York City because we used to march every year since I was five years old. I marched in the parade with my grandfather. He was with the ancient order of Hibernians from the Bronx. He came to this country when he was fucking 16 years old. He worked for the electric company. And uh, he raised he raised six kids in the Bronx on no fucking money, and uh, and he used to walk proud. He he put on his suit with the sash, 
chin up in the air. And, you know, all these kids from Long Island and Jersey are throwing up and taking a piss on a mailbox. He didn't look at that. He looked straight ahead, marching like he was in the IRA when he was in Ireland. He ran messages for the for the IRA from town to town when he was like 13, 14 years old. What an interesting so, fucking race, the Irish. What yeah. an interesting race. And what I've gotten from them is nothing but balls. Yeah. Like I've gotten balls from Irish people that I met. Like I'm like, man. Yeah. When I was a kid, there was a kid, Chucky McBreen. He's the head coach of the Ramapo men's basketball team. Uh huh. We still talk. I love that motherfucker with all my heart because he was tiny. But the balls on him till the end, yeah. and he would argue with you till the end, even if you were bigger than him. Uh-huh. And you know what? He wouldn't fight you. That wasn't his style. But yeah. he was such a classy guy. I I loved him. And now you know he, he his season that didn't have a budget for the COVID this year, so he got canceled. Right. But it's so weird. All the Irish kids I grew up with, they were very similar to Cuban kids. We're very hard headed. Uh huh. We go in head first without thinking. You know. Yeah. Yeah. We swing first. Yeah. And it's know. also like the Irish, you know, we never had, you look at some European countries, the French or the Italians, we never had that clothing style. We dressed like fucking pigs, big, big wool sweaters and, you know, shit kicker boots and the food's terrible. Everything's boiled and, uh, and all that. But, but when it came to loyalty, when That's it came it. to storytelling- yeah. People that could hold your attention, they respected that you were paying attention to them, so they gave you a good story and a good laugh. And uh, yeah, and the loyalty and the, the fighting spirit, the independence. You know, this I, I go over that. We were supposed to go to Ireland last summer, but we couldn't go because of COVID. But we were supposed to go to Cuba. Remember, I was going to go to Cuba in the spring, and then we were going to Ireland in the summer. Both both trips got canceled, but. As soon as the COVID dies down, we're going to both places. Both fucking highly Catholic countries. That's right. Well, it's a Catholic island. You know, it's really a fucking island, but highly Catholic. But everybody, uh, I respect you in a lot of ways. You're staying. You're going to hunker down and fucking stay in L.A. You know, I, I don't live in L.A. I live in Venice Beach, and that's a big difference. Venice Beach is a neighborhood. You know, I know every one of my neighbors for two blocks in every direction. People have open yards, no fences, dogs, kids. Everybody's walking back and forth. I'm a mile from the beach. I I do fucking yoga on the beach on Sunday mornings. We play volley, sand volleyball on the beach on the weekends. We got poker nights. You know, there's a lot of good-looking young people, a lot of hot young girls walking around the neighborhood. It's the greatest. I love it. So you're good down there. Where, where am I going to go? Where am I going to go that's better than that? To me, it's about like it's about being able to socialize without getting into my car in Los Angeles. I walk down the street. We have dinner with some friends at their house. You know, it's easy. Are you getting vaccinated when it's your turn? I got one. I got to okay. get the second one. Yeah. And you're going to do comedy inside? You feel great? The whole thing? You're- yeah, I got some. I got. Well, let me mention my dates. I got a couple coming up. I'm going to be in uh, next weekend. I don't, I don't know when this airs, but I'm going to be in, um, uh, where am I going? Hold on. I'm going to uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, you know, Good Nights. Right. I'll be there uh, March 25th through the 27th, and then I'll be at Philly and Helium the 22nd through the 25th of April, and then I got Kansas City coming up after that. Maybe San Francisco. I'm not sure if they're going to open the club. So you're doing your thing. You're hanging in there. No homeless by you down there? Oh, we got homeless. We got a lot of homeless. A lot of homeless. Yeah, it's a big issue, man. It's like, you know, people are pitching in, though. You know, we we help out at this soup kitchen, the people concerned. We go out there, buy some groceries, drop it off on Sundays. And, uh, you know, you try to throw them some money on the street, talk to them like they're human beings. Don't walk past them. That's what I did when I was in North Hollywood. But towards the end, it got a little, even I had, like, personal protection I had like yeah. a big black homeless dude that was fucking six foot four. What do you want to do? <laughs> oh yeah, fuck it, yeah. And I would see him and throw him twenties. Yeah, I would see him and pull over and have my daughter give him a twenty. I go, you see my daughter get into a jam, you jump in there, G. That's nice. No, no worries, nice. I'll kill a motherfucker for you, D. Yeah, you know he yeah. called me D all the time. He was great. Uh-huh. I had a couple guys. I had another guy that wouldn't let me help him, give him food, but he let me give him clothes and shit like that. Uh huh. Yeah. I would bring him vitamins. You know. That, that, yeah. That, that, that's just. You help in your community. That's the best you could do. You, you can't help everybody. Yeah. 
but you do the now, best look, you can. Now, look, here's the bottom line. We live in Los Angeles. It's got the best weather of anywhere in the country. Anywhere in the country. It, it doesn't get too hot in the summer. It doesn't get too cold in the winter. So people, everybody wants to say, oh, look at the Californians. Look at you now. You got all these homeless. Yeah, where do you think they came from? They came from your shit state. You know, when they couldn't afford to live there anymore because they're on the streets. You think they're going to stay on the streets in Ohio or fucking deep in Texas? No, they're coming out to California. It's not our problem. It's all of our problems. And so, you know, people have a reaction to it and they say, well, fuck this. I'm leaving town. I don't want to be around these homeless people. Well, how about you stay home and you fix your home? That's no offense good. to you. I know you didn't leave because of the homeless. You had no, other reasons. No, 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 no. But other, I see a lot of people, they leave L.A. and then they want to shit on it on the way out. And it's like, no, I hey, you know. I didn't shit on it on the way out. I, I felt bad, to be honest with you. I felt yeah. uh, very bad. But I always knew, like, I didn't buy. I never bought right. for a reason. I looked right. at Woodland Hills and it just didn't rub me the right way when I went looking. I think we went right after we had the baby. Yeah. And I was like, let's just see where we end up. You know, I was thinking about moving to Tennessee. I mean, I had always been thinking it was either going to be Tennessee, close to my w- wife's family, Jersey, or back to Colorado. I just, yeah. did, I couldn't go back to Boulder. I, I disrespected Boulder enough. Uh-huh. I already did time there. I didn't want to go back to Boulder. I didn't deserve it. You know, uh-huh. I was going to go to like Telluride or something. Oh, yeah, that's nice there. But I realized one thing. That even with you, Rogan, uh, all my friends, you know, comedy wise, I was missing something. There mm-hmm. was something missing. I was. I, I been, feel that. I had been gone long enough. Like, uh huh. I wanted my daughter to experience White Castle Burgers. You know, mm-hmm. I wanted her. Monday night, she had a bad night, and I took her to Carvel. And on the way there, I go, What are nice. you going to have? And she goes, I'm going to have a chocolate ice cream soda. Uh-huh. I go, when was the last time you had one of those? She goes, well, I tasted your vanilla one, and it was that good. Uh-huh. To sit across from my daughter eating a Carvel chocolate ice cream, like for her to, and as soon as she got it, she didn't say two words. She started sipping it. She drank it all the way to the fucking bottom. I, yeah. I had tears in my eyes. Yeah, Saturday yeah. night is date night here. We all sit home and we watch the honeymooners at 9.30. Oh, no shit, and really? Archie Bunker. Last <laughs> week he said chink, and my so daughter's great. like, what's that? And don't worry ah. about it. He said chink on TV, like 2021, they, WPIX said, fuck it, we don't give a fuck, we're not going to edit them. Oh, yeah, said, followed chink. by him threatening his wife with domestic violence yeah, for no, five minutes. No, and then we watch, you know, then you watch the honeymoon as he's going to knock her out to the moon, bang yeah, his own right, to the right. moon. And you, but when she said, when she said, what's a chink? Me and my wife nearly shit our fucking pants. Cause <laughs> <laughs> what do you tell him? You know, like, yeah. what do that was the TV in the fucking 70s. And well, a w- chink, honey, let, let daddy tell you about a story that happened up at a massage parlor in Michigan. Yeah, no, but I would never, <laughs> I don't use racial epithets in front of no. her. That's one thing yeah. I don't, because you learn racism at home. She doesn't, she has African-American friends and Chinese friends, and yeah. her best friend is a Jewish little girl, and uh-huh. she loves saying her name, you know, the whole thing. Yeah. So that's all been great, but I do miss you guys. Yeah. I think when the comedy store opens, it's going to really affect me a little bit. Right. There was parts of me, I, I wanted it not to open up so I wouldn't uh-huh. feel so bad. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. But I think once it opens up, eventually we'll have a little reunion out there. Fucking bust well, out your the spirit, edibles. Well, your spirit's always going to be in that back hallway, Joey. You're, yes, every, it is. We're going to yes, feel you is. there. No, yes, it is, man. And I uh, I think that's the be the ticket. I came to terms that once it opens up, we'll give it some time and... We'll get all the band together. Rogan, yeah. yourself, Burr, who's ever allowed in there. You never right, know anymore, right. you know. Right, right. And, yeah, there's a uh, few no-shows. Yeah, there's a few no-shows. And we'll do the best we can. Until that time, yeah. you and I will keep talking every other week. Yep. We'll continue to be Irish Catholic Cuban brothers. And That's hopefully right. you can make it to Cuba and meet my aunt. Because my aunt was going to hook you up, you know. I called. I know, you she told said, me she's going to pick me up at the friends. airport. Yeah. Yeah. And bring you over and cook for you and, you know, yep. uh, tell you I about it. I need me, that. I need me, that experience in my me, life. That, meet, that's... meet my sister, maybe. You know, you would have went. Yeah. I haven't seen my sister in 50 years. You would have got to meet my sister. How yeah. bad would I? There was, she was planning on giving you an envelope for me, like uh, pictures and shit like that. Uh-huh. I think you're probably going to send me down with an envelope, too. Yeah, I probably no. I was thinking about sending you down with an envelope, a little cash to give them, because if yeah. you send money, the fucking communists take 30, 40%. 
It's like having 10 fucking agents. You right. know, you send 100 bucks, you only get 20. Yeah, it's like, right. what the fuck is that? So every time yeah, I send I money, that. I got to send extra money because the fucking eight, the Cubans take it. So, uh -huh. But I miss you, brother, and I'm happy you took the time on a Monday morning to talk to me. Of course, of happy course. Happy St. Patty's Day. Congratulations happy. on your daughter watching you do comedy. Right. I, yeah. I can't wait. Yeah. Till I can take my daughter to see me and for her to go, Dad, what the fuck was that? You know? Yeah. I won't yeah. have that high energy. I'll be too old by that time, but <laughs> I'll give it fucking hell. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You'll give it the best set you've ever given it. Fitz, I yeah. love you with all my heart. Thank you very much for coming on the joint. And uh, we'll talk like we usually do, brother. I'll be all in right, touch. All right, buddy. I love you too. Thanks Thank for Thank you very me much on. for doing this. You got it. Stay black. All right. Take care. We're back, cocksuckers. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, Greg Fitzsimmons is one of my all-time fucking favorites. You know, I had to tell him about Puerto Rican Nelson. Then I looked him up when I got back here to see if we could find them. And then we couldn't find them, blah, blah, blah. So it all worked out, man. But now, uh, what are we do? What we're doing on Mondays from now on is I'm contacting all the comics that I miss, and we're gonna do a little podcastio. And in time, you'll see all your favorites. Some of you might like, some of you might not. But I'm just getting this Zoom thing going because, listen, guys, I don't know how far this is gonna go, and I'm sick and tired of sitting here and expecting you to pay attention to me for a fucking hour. I don't want to do that either. I don't want to listen to me for a fucking hour either. So we had to integrate some guests in here just to fucking uh, give you a different taste and a different look. See, you know what I'm saying? I hope you people are enjoying it. You know, uh, I love Greg. Uh, you could tell in our little fucking chit-chat that we both needed to see each other. This is what it's been, guys. If you're feeling a little weird, a little out of sorts right now, hey man, it's all right. We're all feeling weird or out of sorts, but your friendships are still there and they shouldn't feel weird and out of sorts. Reach out. They might make your day. Look at my day. It's get, I'm getting better every time you fucking guys see me and it's because I'm taking the right steps. I eliminated those fucking edibles from my daytime life and now I'm a normal fucking dad. I'm just a normal person. I'm out of that LA bullshit. I'm happy to be out of that type. You know, that little toxic type environment that everybody is needy and everybody needs to have Instagram friends and all this shit. I'm out of that. Now I'm just a regular suburban fucking dad. I'm not looking for nothing. I didn't get the Ray Romano movie. Did I fucking cry? I was like, no, so what? Who cares? Really? You're not upset? No. It wasn't meant to be. God didn't put it in the fucking path when it ain't meant to be. You move on and they're shooting in Queens anyway. So you know what? The fucking rate of transmission is like 4.9 over there. You sneeze. If you sneeze, you get fucking COVID over there. If you push out, you get COVID. So everything happens for a reason. This time you have to accept things, guys. Sometimes, listen, it, it wasn't going to change my life, but I just wanted to work a little bit. I never met Ray Romano. I'd like to be in his di directorial debut, but it didn't work out that way. And that's this is what life is about. It's adjusting. You got to have to take a couple no's before you get to a yes. And that's it. Every once in a while, no, 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 no. Nobody wants me. Okay. There's going to be one person who's going to want you. And that's, that's been the truth of me all my life. So uh, hang in there. I know we're going through two t uh, tough times, but we're almost out of the fucking weeds. There's still a little shoe that's going to drop, but that still means we can still make progress and still push forward every week and still get fucking what we need. I will get the vaccine in time, I promise you guys. Right now, I'm not doing nothing fucking spectacular to do it. I mean, I'm sorry about Uncle Vinny's last week that they had it canceled. Uh, there's a rumor going around that I have COVID. Uh, I, I took three fucking tests. I ain't got no fucking COVID, so I don't know where the fuck that got. That came around. Like 10 people called me. You got COVID? Not really. The, the club, I don't know. I don't know what happened, so. I mind my business. I don't know nothing. And I advise you to do the fucking same. I love you, motherfuckers. I'm happy you're enjoying the joint. I'm happy you enjoyed this episode. Uh, I'm having a great time. Mike's having a great time. And we're just trying to put this motherfucker together for you every Monday and Wednesday. That's all we're doing. No explosives, no lights, no bullshit. Just straight up fucking coming at you. And every week we're going to get better and better. And this is what life is about. Is getting just a little better every week. I'm, I don't need to be number one. Uh, listen, I'm getting a little better every week. I know you guys are too. So thank you very much for supporting us. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you motherfuckers Wednesday morning. Tip top motherfucking Magoo. 
Now for a word from our sponsors. I love you, cocksuckers. Stay black. All right, cocksuckers. I want to thank you guys for listening. I want to thank Greg Fitzsimmons for being a gentleman. As always, always a piss of having him on. Always a piss of seeing him. Guys, I'm getting a lot out of these uh, Zooms. This is really helping me a lot. It's a it's a different podcast. And it's a you know what? I, I sometimes you got to surrender. And I'm making you guys even happy. And that's all that matters to me is that you guys are happy. Before we leave, the joint is brought to you by Blue Chew. Listen, that's it. You're allowed to go out. You're going to be able to mingle. You're going to get your vaccine. You're going to meet a woman. Maybe you've been celibate for the last year. Maybe you haven't been able to, you know, make love for whatever reasons. COVID. If you, after you get your little fucking uh, vaccine, you can make it happen again. Make sure that when you go back out there on the field, you got confidence where it counts. That's where I come in. That's where Blue Chew comes in. You combat all forms of ED. Blue Chew brings you the first chewable dick pill. Same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis at a fraction of a cost. And this isn't the fucking, you know, some fucking uh, fungi toe from Brazil that you snort it and makes your dick hard. No, no, no. This is science. Blue Chew is an online prescription service. No visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting online at the pharmacy. The process is simple. Sign up at bluechew.com. Write that down. Capital B L U E Chew. Capital C H E U.com and talk to one of their licensed medical providers. Once they approve you, you'll receive your prescription within days. It's shipped right to your door in a discreet package. The mailman don't know dick that you got dick pills. You know what I'm saying? Gah, 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 gah. Anyway, <laughs> Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA, and they're prepared and shipped directly. Way cheaper than any pharmacy or anything you're going to get anywhere else. So do me a favor. Right now, I got a special deal for you like Uncle Joey does every fucking Monday. Try Blue Chew for free. What are you talking about, Joey? Free. Free. Use promo code Joey at checkout. All you're going to do is pay $5 for shipping. That's BlueChew.com, promo code Joey, to receive your first month for free. And as always, I want to thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the joint. The joint is also brought to you by CBD Line. I can't talk enough about these guys. Whether it's the bath ball, the tincture, the kinesiology tape, the gummy bears, and when you get the gummy bears, make sure you either get the raspberry ones. I love them. They're all good, but I have a little fucking spot in my heart for the raspberry ones. I don't know why. The CBD chocolate. I mean, listen, CBD Lion has you covered. Go to CBDLion.com. Read. I need for you to read their website and see what's on there. It's going to change your goddamn life, guys. This is a game changer. I, I have done a whole surgery with it. I am no problems, no nothing. Whether you use the tincture, the tape, whatever you need, CBD will fill that void. Go to CBDLine.com right now. Press in church or Joey and get 20% off delivered right to your fucking house. Who else does that? Nobody. Go with CBD Line. Trust me. They're the ones that have bailed me out of this fucking whole surgery in my knee. CBD Lion, the way to go. And the joint is also brought to you by, listen, I just call them motherfucking money because it's DraftKings, okay? It's April. The tournament madness, it's fucking heating up. It's fucking insane, all right? You're sitting there on the couch. You don't know what to do. I can't get my vaccine. Fuck the fucking vaccine. There's a tournament going on. And fucking DraftKings is making it happen again. Remember last week? I came to you, you bet $4, you win $254, fuck that. Listen to what they're doing this week over at DraftKings. You bet a dollar on any tournament game. If your team wins, you win $100. It's that fucking simple. Pick any college basketball team that's still running for your shot at winning $100, and it only takes $1. Listen, I got two games for you you got to look at. This afternoon, you got Oklahoma getting 14 and a half against Gonzaga, and you got Colorado getting two versus Florida State. That's a fucking start right there. Take a look at those. You got a chance to turn $1 into $100. $1 into $100. That's 100 to 1 odds. This is what I'm talking about at DraftKings Sportsbook. There's no better way to put your college basketball knowledge to test them than to put your money where your fucking mouth is with DraftKings Sportsbook. The best. Oh, 
College basketball ain't for me, Joey. I can't keep it. Well, who the fuck gives a shit? Do you like money? They're also giving you 100 to 1 odds on select fighters at this weekend's UFC 260. You got Stipe. You got Miocicic, whatever his fucking name is. You got Ungayo. You got Tyrone Woodley fighting. You got Sean O'Malley. It's a great card. DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable. You withdraw your money when you want. It's your fucking money. What are you fucking around for? Who's better than you? Nobody. And who's better than your Uncle Joey? Nobody. And who's better than DraftKings? Nobody. That's why. Download the top graded DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code Joey when you sign up to turn a dollar into $100 if the college basketball team of your choosing pulls off the win. That's code Joey to turn a dollar into $100 for a limited time only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Listen, I'm telling you from my heart, Draft, this shit is fucking fun. I took a beating on Saturday night. I fucking was making fun of the Grand Canyon, and they fucking covered those cocksuckers. So be careful. Anyway, download the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. Use promo code JOY when you sign up to turn a dollar into $100 of the college basketball team of your choosing pulls off the win. That's code JOY to turn a dollar into $100. That's 100 to 1 odds, guys. Come on, give yourself a break. And this is for a limited time only at DraftKings Sportsbook app. Here's the fine print. You got to be 21 old. The New Jersey, Indiana, PA only. I think Tennessee, Colorado. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Now, if you got a gambling problem, I'd rather you call 1-800-GAMBLER. Or if you're in Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. But if you're straight... It's time to get down and sling dick. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app today, right now, and put a fucking dollar on fucking Gonzaga. I don't give a fuck what you do. At 100 to 1 odds, you can't fucking lose. It's a beautiful day to be alive. Thank you very much for listening to the fucking joint. I love you motherfuckers with all my heart. I want to thank Greg Fitzsimmons. I want to thank you guys. I want to thank Patreon. I love all you cocksuckers. Stay black. Not only is the joint coming out today on YouTube, but we have La Descarga, a Spanish podcast that comes out on Patreon, $3, 5 or 10 Knock yourselves the fuck out. I love you, motherfucker. Stay black. Have a great week. <sighs> Uncle Joey loves you. Bam! Thank you.